Hi there, let's take a look at one aspect of public goods which comes up a lot in AS Micro and that's the idea of the free rider problem. Here's a contemporary example, here's a journalist whose wife's printer uh, stopped working so he, his wife ordered another printer from Amazon which arrived and uh, the journalist took the broken printer to the Best Buy which offers free and easy recycling of discarded unwanted electronic products. And the essence of the article was that Amazon and Walmart and others are essentially taking a free ride. Uh, Best Buy are providing uh, the service, free recycling. Uh, pretty much uh, they're trying to achieve you know, cost, they're trying to cover their costs. But Amazon and Walmart are basically getting the benefit of sales without necessarily incurring the cost of taking in computers to repair or recycle or dispose of safely. Good example of the free rider in a business context. Let's go to geopolitics. A few weeks ago, Barack Obama gave a speech in which he more or less accused some European nations who are part of NATO of taking a free ride on America's financial and military expenses uh, in, their, in their current operations in Syria. So the free rider problem has a geopolitical aspect and it has a sort of microeconomic aspect in particular markets. Let's think about public goods. Now, pure public goods are non-excludable and they're non-rival. So non-excludable means it's hard, sometimes impossible, for a producer to prevent, at reasonable cost, someone from consuming the good or service, even if they haven't made a payment for it. Uh, non-rival means that if you provide uh, the good for one person, it doesn't reduce the amount that's available to somebody else. Now, the key to understanding the free rider is to understanding non-excludability. So because public goods are non-excludable, difficult to charge people a market price for benefiting from the public good once the product's available. And thus, because you can't exclude and charge, the free market will probably not provide public goods. And hence the free rider problem leads to what's called under-provision of, of a good, and thus either a partial market failure, if it's under-provided, if it's not provided at all, you can argue there's a complete market failure. And uh, the, the graphic here shows some good, good examples of public goodish, goodishness, you know, so the benefits from big sanitation infrastructure projects, the wider community benefits from flood defence schemes, that sense of security from the presence of police uh, and other armed services, for example, even if you haven't paid for the protection, you, get, you still get the benefit. You still get the benefit of other people uh, incur the, the disutility and the cost of being vaccinated. Uh, people making available, freely available information online. Uh, people can take a free ride on that. And likewise, publicly available terrestrial and, and news on the radio. For example, BBC World. So public goods, which are non-excludable, give rise to the free rider problem. And the free rider problem is one reason why the private sector may not provide public goods at all. Hence, a market failure. So there we go. That's the essence, I hope, of the free rider problem.